Once again, my beloved parishioners, it is good to celebrate with you on this beautiful Sunday morning, rather, fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, um, the reason we are going back to uh, live on Sundays is because some people had some issues last week uh, with YouTube. Uh, again, the problem was uh, probably at the source uh, since it was on select um, phones. I believe uh, those who are watching um, on their computers or on the YouTube app on TV had no uh, problems. It was just, an, and, and some phones were okay. It was just some phones that were, uh, anyway, I just didn't want to mess with it. Uh, so we are going live on Facebook. The only problem is that the uh, video quality on Facebook, Facebook lowers the video quality. I am uh, recording it also on the camcorder uh, so that we can do a better, uh, upload a better um, uh, video quality on YouTube later on. Hopefully that problem, that glitch from last week was uh, an isolated event. event. Uh, do let me know please if the audio is coming clear right now. Um, the video gets fuzzy but that's Facebook and so we can't do anything about that. Um, today's Mass <clears throat> Is offered, let's see, uh, for the eternal rest of Maria Arminda Lopez, um, for the eternal rest of Inocencio Gonzalez, Guadalupe Gonzalez, Raul Gonzalez, Hilda Gonzalez, Ricardo Gonzalez, also for the health of Lili Ramirez. Muy bien. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we come before the Lord today, as we acknowledge His, um, His shepherding over us, as we acknowledge the times that we have not allowed the shepherd to guide us, let us ask for forgiveness right now. Lord Jesus, you have come to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come that we might have life in abundance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come that we might be reconciled with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so we joyfully sing to the glory of God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We 
adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill for you alone are the Holy One you alone are the Lord you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the the Father. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We listen now to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Know when they heard this, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of his sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. Pastures, 
He gives me repose Beside restful waters He leads me He refreshes my soul The He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff. That give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to do this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you shall follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the ones who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you now return to the shepherd and the guardian of our souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to, to God. Spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold to the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters to the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it up for him, and the sheep hear his voice. And the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have life in abundance. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to start with a story. A famous actor was once the guest of honor at a social gathering where he received many requests to recite favorite excerpts from various literary works. Shakespeare, Cervantes, Byron, Milton. He recited all with great class, precision, and clarity. All were amazed at his amazing gift. An old priest who happened to be there asked the actor to recite the 23rd Psalm, the one we read today. The actor agreed on the condition that the preacher would also recite it afterwards. So the actor goes up and the actor's recitation was beautifully intoned with great dramatic emphasis for which he received a lengthy applause. It was now the priest's turn he gets up, slowly makes his way to the microphone, and he begins. His voice was rough and broken from many years of preaching, and his diction was anything but polished. But when he finished, there was not a dry eye in the room. When someone asked the actor what made the difference, the actor replied, I know the psalm, but he, he knows the shepherd. It makes a big difference if we know the shepherd. It makes a big difference going beyond just knowing about the Lord. 
It's a lot of people with a lot of knowledge about the Lord, but actually being shepherded by Him, knowing Him, being guided by Him, recognizing His voice, and submitting to His Lordship and authority. Now, in the Gospel today, uh, we see the comparison of the thief and the shepherd. And I titled this, you know, Thief versus Shepherd. It should be obvious, but the way we live our lives, it almost seems as if we have believed the lies of the thief. Oh, we want to believe the shepherd. We want to submit to the shepherd, but many times because, well, because the lies of the thief will tell us that the shepherd has abandoned us. And the shepherd does not have our best interests at our hearts. Just like Adam and Eve believe the lies of the serpent, the thief specializes in deceit, in lying to us. All right, so um, we're going to do a comparison again. It should be obvious where we should head, but in reality, in the practice in life, sometimes we end up listening to the thief. To the lies of the enemy. All right, verse one. Uh, there in your in your handouts that I posted earlier, um, the homily guide, the numbers in parentheses that are in bold face. That's in reference to the verse in John chapter ten, verses one through ten. And so, um, verse one: Whoever does not enter a sheepfold to the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. How do we recognize the thieves and robbers in our lives? Because we all have them. We all end up believing the lies of thieves and robbers. Because the thieves and the robbers, what do they, what do they rob us of? They rob us of peace, joy. You know, we're trying to be positive during this uh, lockdown, pandemic, uh, quarantine. And we're trying to faithful to the Lord and, and, and we're trying to keep a joyful from day one I said let's remain joyful let's stay positive you know but after a few weeks you know it kind of weighs down heavy upon us and so the thief comes and begins to manufacture lies and, and, and confusion and misinformation and division and then we give to anger frustration confusion anxiety with all the works of the thief in our lives, do we... Now, that's never going to end, the, the presence of the thieves and robbers in our lives. That's, as long as we're in, on this earth, there will always be the thieves and the robbers. And by that I mean, uh, again, could be emotions, could be actual people that take away our peace or that uh, plant seeds of doubt in us. The enemy that um, whispers... Uh, lies into our minds and, and, and we give in to that. We're always going to have that. But how do we distinguish the voice of the Lord from that of the stranger? Well, the enemy is always very impatient. God will never say, we need to do this and do it now. And, and hurry up because, you know, the time is short. The enemy is the one that is always rushing you because, see, the enemy knows that if you slow down, you're eventually going to discover the lies. You know, like when somebody is trying to convince you of, of, of their point, even though they're wrong, they'll speak very fast. They won't let you um, put in a word edgewise because they cannot stand uh, for you to ask questions or debate them because they know their position is weak and so they don't want to let you think and so they're rushing you they're, 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 they're talking and talking and talking because they're afraid that if you you know begin to uh, ask I guess or, or uh, 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 slow down a bit you're going to see the truth and so the enemy is impatient, rushes us, uh, kind of like there's an urgency, if you will. God does not do that. God is the Lord of time and space. God is patient. When he shepherds you, he does not rush you. 
He's patient. He guides you. He, he slowly uh, corrects you, corrects us when we're wrong. So we need to be able to recognize the thieves and the robbers in our lives, that which takes away our peace and reject it. Number two, uh, from verse five, it says, but they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. So how do we get to that point where, where we know the, the voice of the enemy, where we know the voice of the stranger? And, 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 or, or do we entertain the voice of the stranger? Do we enter into dialogue? Remember the, the problem with, um, uh, with uh, Eve, back when we saw the anatomy of sin? is that when the serpent makes that um, deceitful question, is it true that God told you, you know? The serpent knew that, knew the answer. God did not say that. But the, pur the, the, the main purpose of the serpent asking, remember, is to get Eve to engage in dialogue. We cannot enter into dialogue, folks, with sin, with a stranger, with the enemy. Because he lies anyway. So why would we want to engage in dialogue? We must, the Bible says, we must flee. Recognize it for what it is and flee. We don't enter into conversation with the enemy. Do not entertain the voice of strangers. Number three, from verse 10. Verse 10 says, a thief comes only to steal and slaughter. Kill, steal, kill, and destroy, says the old version. Kill, steal. Destroy, sorry, steal, kill, and destroy, or uh, the version today, steal, slaughter, and destroy. If we look at our lives, I, I, and certainly when I um, do a, an analysis, an evaluation of, of where I've been and where I compare the thief versus the shepherd in my life, and um, where I see the evidence of having listened to the shepherd versus the evidence in my life, of having, of having given in to the lies of the thief, I can see, you know, looking back is, of course, you know, retrospective vision, you know, it's always 2020. Looking back, I, I can see the trail of destruction that's left behind when I've listened at the enemy. When I've listened or, 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 or followed the, the, the tactics of the, of the thief. How do we recognize these tactics of the thief to steal, kill, and destroy? Look at the trail of destruction in your life. Whenever we have not listened to the shepherd. Whenever we have, for whatever reason, again, why would we listen to the stranger, to the thief, to the robber? Look, we're not in judgment of anyone. They're, all of us have different reasons why at one point or another we've given in to the lies. Look at Adam and Eve, I mean, good people. They had everything they needed. They had everything God had given, and yet they still listened and believed the lies of the enemy. So why would we do that? I mean, even us as priests, if we don't take care of our lives uh, with prayer, spending time with a shepherd, like the priest in the story I shared with you at the beginning of the homily, um, we're going to be entertaining the voice of the thief and the robber. If we're not in fellowship with the shepherd because of uh, tragedy, because of illness, because of stress. You know, last night as I was, um, I was in the church and then I was walking back to the house. And um, as I was going into the house, this is what the thought that came. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the thought that came to my mind. I said, Lord. This lockdown is going to end pretty soon, or at least very soon. We don't, we don't know when. The bishop will allow us to go back um, into, into the worship space and you know, public masses. And I said, Lord, I feel, honestly, I said, I feel like I've wasted these last eight, seven, eight weeks. By that I meant, like, I should have spent more time with you, Lord. I should have spent it more in prayer. You know, you, you gave us all this wonderful eight-week retreat. You know, and, and that's because it's never enough, folks. I don't think we should ever grow comfortable saying, oh, I've already spent enough time with the shepherd. I've already, I can, I can spend a few days listening to the thief and the robber. You know, so you know, the Lord, I guess, was putting that, not, not 
chastising me or, or accusing me, but I think it was more of an invitation telling me, look, once you go back to the new normal, whatever that might be, you can always carve out more time for intimacy with the Lord, with, with me. With, this is what God was telling me in my heart. So yes, I probably neglected some of the wonderful opportunities the Lord had given me in this last seven, eight weeks, where I really did have significantly more time, you know, to spend it with the shepherd. And I didn't. But there was no chastisement or accusation from the Lord. See, the enemy would have done, the, the thief of the robber would say, see, what kind of a priest are you? You know, here you, you claim, you know, to, or, or the thief, the robber, in pretending to be the shepherd, would have told me, well, here I give you all this time and, 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 and look, you wasted it, you lazy bum. I'm not going to give you another chance. This is too late for you already. Or, or hurry up and you have a few more weeks or a few more days and, and you better hurry up and do it. That would have been the voice of the thief, the robber, pretending to be the shepherd. But the voice of the Lord was, continue to persevere. Yes, you probably did waste a lot of time, but you can still carve out the time in your busy schedule, in the months that are coming ahead. That's the voice of the shepherd. So we must recognize the tactics of the enemy. All right. On the contrary, the shepherd, this is what the shepherd does. Verse 2. Whoever enters through the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. It is about us being able to recognize our shepherd and also those whom the shepherd appoints over us. See, as Catholics, biblically, we believe that you know, the Lord is our shepherd. As um, the, the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles was telling us through the preaching of St. Peter. And um, where the Jesus has been constituted Lord. So he is shepherding us. But he has established our shepherds over us. Basically, we're like mini shepherds that work for the shepherd. You know, the people that God has established an authority over us. In our case, collectively, the Pope, the Bishop. And so we have to keep praying for the Pope and the Bishop. Um, we, for example, in this whole pandemic, um, I posted on Facebook the letter that Bishop sent to all the faithful. We priests also got a separate letter where he tells us to start you know, planning, getting the parishes ready. Uh, for the eventual announcement and uh, later on today I will have a meeting with some volunteers as we begin to explore the different ways uh, to prepare the, 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 the St. Joseph and Queen. We are being obedient to our shepherd, to Bishop Flores. You know, as, and, and some people are like, oh, you know, we should have done this a long time ago. It's already too many weeks. Look, that's the enemy talking. We remember the shepherd is gentle, takes time, never, will never come and push us into making a, a harsh decision or a decision out of impulse. So we must recognize our shepherd, the Lord, and those whom the Lord has appointed as shepherd, shepherds over us. Um, you know, I, I, at the beginning of this um, uh, pandemic, I, my prayer was, it's always been my prayer, but more so at the beginning was, Lord, give me the heart of a shepherd. Because I don't know how I'm going to shepherd the sheep you have entrusted to me in the next weeks. I'm also learning, Lord. But I know that with the heart of a shepherd, even if I make a few mistakes, the Lord will still honor me and honor you. And you will still be shepherded. As long as I seek the shepherd. As long as I continue to pray. To have the heart of a shepherd. To love you. To shepherd you. To be uh, concerned for your spiritual well-being. And you know, I've, I've been learning all this technology stuff that I didn't know before. And I'm still learning. I'm still making great, a lot of mistakes. But it is the heart of the shepherd that drives me. I can assure you of that. I can assure you. It is the, there's nothing else that drives me when it comes to you than the heart of a shepherd. Yeah, that's why, uh, for example, I haven't really talked much about the financial status that we're going through right now. You know, <laughs> eventually I will because we have to. We, th there's a, 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 a spiritual dimension to our tithings. But, you know, for me, that's secondary. Uh, important, but secondary. 
the most important thing for me as your shepherd is that you are being shepherded rightly. That, that, that you're growing, that you have everything that you need uh, at home, uh, online, to be able to grow. And I, I listen to you. I, you know, I, I'm engaged in dialogue with you. Um, but because I know that I have, that God has appointed shepherds over me, primarily the bishop, my parents. <laughs> I was telling you yesterday in Mass, or yesterday or Friday, that you know, uh, whenever the bishop t- tells me something, I got to believe it. It's from the Lord. And whenever mom and dad me regaña, and they reprimand me, they correct me, because they still do, I'm 48, but mom and dad still have the right from the Lord <laughs> to correct me. And they do. They do. I got to believe, Lord, that's from you. Because we have to be obedient, not just to the shepherd, but to the shepherds that God has appointed over us. All of us are under authority, folks. All of us. All of us respond to someone else that the Lord has placed over us. Uh, number two on the, on the shepherd part. Uh, coming from verse three. As a shepherd calls his own sheep by name, he leads them out. Being called by name by the shepherd. You know, there's a word for that. That's intimacy. To be known by the shepherd. To be called by name. Spend that time in the, with the shepherd in prayer. And, and, and listen to him as he calls you by name. Remember uh, Mary Magdalene uh, when she went to the tomb and saw the Lord, but she thought he was a gardener? Remember when she recognized him? Anybody remember? When he said, Mary. I imagine there was such a way that he said it that it just flooded her heart and mind with memories and thoughts and emotions that she recognized him the way he pronounced his na- her name. The Spanish song, um, I think it's Pescador de Hombres. Sonriendo has dicho mi nombre. It is Pescador de Hombres, right? Sonriendo, smiling, you have mentioned my name. You know, because when the Lord, the shepherd mentions your name, it's a smile on his face. Amen. He rejoices when he mentions your name, being called by the Lord by name. Number three, verse four says, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them. When he takes him out of the, the, the sheepfold, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. Again, Leadership, leadership in the church is called servant leadership. Yes, we are leading the flock, but we're serving the flock. Uh, I believe it was from a, a quote from, John, from um, Pope Francis. I believe it was from Pope Francis in Evangelii Gaudium, uh, the joy of the gospel. That is uh, talking about the bishops, but it's true of any leader. He says, the bishop, a shepherd, Sometimes he is always leading. He's always leading the flock. It doesn't necessarily mean physically from the front. In fact, if you've seen pictures of shepherds, they're in the back. So they can, especially when they're feeding, so he can be looking at all of them. Have you seen pictures of that? He needs to be able to see. And if it's in the front, he won't be able to see the, the sheep. I don't know if that makes sense visually. And so this document says that the bishop or the priest is always leading. Sometimes in the front. Sometimes he goes to the back. Para ver a sus ovejitas. And sometimes he is in the midst of them. But always leading. It's a beautiful image of the shepherd. Sometimes on the front. Sometimes on the back. Sometimes in the midst of them. Like right now. But always leading with love. And with care. Let me see him. I'm going to try to read the comments. I, I forget that we're live I, since we usually record this mass. Uh, it's, well, on the other camera, it's being recorded. Um, uh, do, do let me know if uh, the audio is still coming in loud and clear. Appreciate it. And of course, uh, you can put in other uh, mass intentions. All right, let's finish. So, uh, number four, which comes from verse 10. This is the rejoinder to... Um, what the thief does, a thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came 
so that they might have life and have life in abundance. Abundant life. How does that look like to you in the time of the coronavirus? Spirituality in the time of coronavirus. I made a reference last time to that movie, uh, Love in the Time of Cholera, and I, my theme has been spirituality in the time of coronavirus. Just because we are in lockdown, shelter in place, where it's already finished, sort of, uh, just because we are displaced right now, deployed right now, does not mean that life is any less abundant for you. Amen? It does not mean that life has less dignity, less value. Or that somehow, listen to what I'm going to say because I've heard this from some people, some of my sheep and I have to be patient and love them, that, that somehow we are being cheated out of our Catholic faith, of the Eucharist. There's even extremely conservative Catholic groups out there that are quite angry at the Pope, at the bishops of Texas. We can't do that, folks. We are not being deprived of the abundant life. We are not being deprived of our spirituality. Life is not any less abundant. In fact, I would think, I'm thinking, you know, like 99.9% like .9 of you uh, have concluded that, you know, this is... This is going to make actually life even more abundant for us, spiritually speaking. Because we are evaluating the things that we have neglected. The things that we have taken for granted. So if anything, this whole thing is going to help us live life more intensely, I pray. This whole thing will help us live our faith with more passion. With more conviction. Life even more abundant. You are not being deprived of the abundant life. It is not less uh, dignified or, or somehow like we're being robbed. Or cheated. I think if we give in to those thought processes. That's where we're being robbed of peace. I don't know if that makes sense. To think that we are being robbed of our faith or, or cheated out of our, uh, the abundant life. That thinking process is actually of the robber. <laughs> For us to think that we're being robbed of peace and I mean, being robbed of our faith and, and our spirituality. And, and somehow it's less than. It's not, folks. It's learning to live with the reality of what's around us. And if we live faithfully during these eight weeks or so, when we come back to the public celebration of Mass and the resumption of services, we can experience more intensely the abundant life. We can experience our faith in more passionate ways. God has not abandoned His people. The shepherd is still shepherding us. We heard it in the psalm today. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So no matter where the Lord is shepherding us, the shepherd is right there, sheltered in place with you, in lockdown with you, quarantined with you. Like the, uh, two, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, stay with us, Lord. Stay with us in quarantine. Stay with us. The Lord has not abandoned us. The shepherd is in our midst. Amen. Blessings and peace. Please stand. Let us together profess our faith as we all say we believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, of all things, things visible and invisible. and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Born, Born of the, the Father, Father before, before all ages, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God, God from true God, God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came, came down, down from, from heaven, heaven. And, by and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again from the dead. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the shepherd who always, always guides us and leads us and listens to us. We come to him with all of our needs. For the Lord's flock and for its pastors, that they always reflect the Lord's deep love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the people of every nation, that they live their lives with courage and find true peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those called to religious vocations and for those called to minister in the world as lay people, that they respond with generous hearts to the Lord's voice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who feel lost and abandoned, that they enjoy the nurturing love and support of the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the members of this assembly, that we and all those who we love shepherd one another well, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Father of mercy and compassion, Father of love, thank you for the shepherding love of your son Jesus. We bring these prayers to you. We trust in your providential care. And we will live life abundantly as it comes to us from your Son. May we, faith, may we be faithful to you to the end. We make this prayer through our Shepherd, our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Please be seated. Remember to mail us your tidings or bring them to the office or do it online. Thank you for responding to the Lord's invitation to be generous. We now prepare the altar with your gifts of bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. To the mystery of this water and wine, let us come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with this sacrifice we offer you. With humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. My dear family, the altar is ready. The table is set. Pray that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause 
of our unending joy, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice <coughs> and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Mario, our Auxiliary Bishop, and Raimundo, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for Minda, uh, Inocencio, Guadalupe, Raul, Hilda, Ricardo, and Jacinta Obare. And all who have done in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. We pray for Lily Ramirez and for Linda Arellano, that you may bless her on her birthday. That with a blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Queen of the Universe, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we come before the Father with joy, with hope, with expectation, with the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of God's peace.
This is our shepherd. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who have been called to the table of the Lord. Lord, Lord I am I not am worthy not that worthy. you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the, word, the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Communion Antiphon, the good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock, alleluia. Please do now your spirit to communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. pray look upon your flock kind shepherd and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your son who lives and reigns forever and ever amen, amen. So I pray you've had time to read prayerfully with an uh, open heart the letter from our local shepherd, from our bishop. Um, there he outlines some of the necessary steps that every parish must take, uh, of course, to ensure the safety uh, and well-being of all, especially the most vulnerable, vulnerable populations, before he can issue uh, the decree to uh, reopen our parishes for uh, celebration of mass and other activities. Uh, I will be meeting with some volunteers 
who will then coordinate other volunteers um, in establishing uh, those guidelines and, and protocols um, because it's not going to be a massive reopening. It's not going to be where Bishop says, okay, yeah, everybody come back. It'll be in stages as well. Uh, whenever he does um, give the decree, um, we will still be uh, implementing the uh, CDC guidelines of uh, the six feet of distance. And so, but we're going to be coming up with uh, other creative ways once we do come back and, you know, um, because of the limits, you will not be deprived of the abundant life. I can assure you of that. The only way that you might be deprived is if you believe the enemy's lies, that you're being deprived of it. So believe that you will be given life in abundance. So I will meet with uh, some volunteers, leaders today, um, and, um, and then we'll keep you posted. Like always, please have an open heart, an open mind, prayerful heart, and um, God has not abandoned us. So, um, Mass at 12 noon will be in Spanish, so pass the word. And so hopefully, um, oh, I probably won't see you at 12 noon, but I'll see a few, I'll see the 12 noon Mass people, the Spanish ones, at 12 noon. Um, I am recording this also on the camcorder, so a bit, little bit of a better quality, and we'll uh, edit that one and put it on, um, on YouTube later on, probably tomorrow. Uh, Linda Arellano, if you're watching, Happy birthday. May the Lord fill you with his abundant blessings. I won't ask you how old you are turning, but I'm sure you um, have led the blessed, abundant life in the Lord. And we wish much more abundance for you, my beautiful sister in Christ. So, Linda, happy birthday to you. Be blessed. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Remember, to each invocation, we will respond with a hearty amen. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting, of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, be living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit fall upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. My beautiful brothers and sisters, have a beautiful Sunday. Be safe, be joyful, be happy. And please, please do me a favor. Stay blessed today and every day. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back.